Good morning, Orville Baptist Church. Good morning. So good to see everyone today. You guys ready to get excited? Yeah. Yeah. We get to tell people about our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And we should be so excited to be able to do that. Would you stand up with us as we sing, Get All Excited. church it is so good to be with you good to be able to be in God's house this morning and um, just to be able to lift up our praise wouldn't it be exciting that if we got all excited and told everybody about Jesus and that he is king that's kind of what we're talking about today as we talk about uh, fear and embarrassment uh, when it comes to being a Christian and so I'm glad that you're here We'll look at God's word in just a little bit. Maybe you have a praise on your heart that you wanted to share this morning of what God has done uh, for or through or in you in this past week. Oh, you know, I, I just cannot praise God enough for our trip and how his hand was in everything. You know, no matter what goes on in your life, God always is there and he provides a way. Praise God for our pastor. Praise God for his grace, his mercy, and his love. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> if you. If you don't know all about that, I took uh, a group of 12 women uh, to Virginia and that in and of itself has uh, got a lot of stuff to talk about. <laughs> in fact, Chrissy Fickle gave me a... Weaver. Chrissy Weaver gave me, <laughs> gave me a mug and it said, Be careful what you say, you may be in my sermon. <laughs> and I'm betting there probably will be. So. <laughs> Just guessing. All right, Adam right here. Uh, Dave? Hi. Uh, our son started preschool this past Thursday. Yay! And, uh, my wife, Rihanna, and I were both a little hesitant and uh, worried when we uh, dropped him off that morning, but he did excellent. He walked in, got along with all the kids, and his first date, all the kids, they did well together. So uh, we were really worried uh, Wednesday night going into Thursday that he uh, might be a little handful that morning, but he was good. So. Yes, that is great news. Because they're all boys in that class. All boys yeah. in that class. Pray for that teacher, yeah. too. Yeah, yeah. That's exciting. I, you know, we can all remember back to the first day of school for kids. All right, somebody else? Word of praise? I just praise God that he, affirmation, just makes us know 
that he hears us and that he has uh, plans for us. Little things happen, and and um, on uh, Friday night, uh, Janet shared, and it was so cool. Um, some of the things that she shared and, and what she shared made me think about um, the verse in Isaiah where, where uh, God says, I will give you beauty for ashes. Mm -hmm. And um, the very next day at the uh, conference, they had areas set up, you know, women and shopping. You've got to have areas set up for shopping, right? And one of the areas right behind it said, beauty for ashes. Yeah. And God just cares enough to say, see, I I led you to that verse last night, and look, here it is, here it is on the wall today. Yeah. You know, that, that I, I am there. Um, he's got footprints all over. If Wonderful. you look for him. Yes. I praise him for that. That's right. All right. Anybody else? Hey, Kevin King. Yeah, I have a praise. Uh, Monday, my wife and I went down to see our daughter in Columbus and son-in-law. They're getting ready to move in a new apartment. Uh, it looks like they're coming out of a semi-decent uh, neighborhood, going to a rather nice neighborhood. Very and nice. while I was down there, I got to present my, my daughter, Alyssa, with the Bible that I had read and noted for and presented that to her on Monday. So. Amen. <clears throat> May the word that you have planted and you have read in your daughter's heart bring much fruit. Amen. 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 All right. Anybody else? Yes. Dean. I would like to give praise again for God's healing hand uh, in my life once again. Thank you everyone for the prayers and cards as I uh, endured a kidney stone passing. So it's so nice to feel the love and affection and prayers from our church. Um, I don't know if anyone's ha ever had a kidney stone here, but a couple hands, it's, it's very painful. And um, I don't know what came over me, but something did. Teresa had to go get groceries. And uh, I had passed my kidney stone during that time. And um, it, it just, it hit me to go out and find a, a large stone. So I did. I went out by the sandbox and found a stone that was about that big. And brought it in and laid it on the bathroom shelf. And I said, honey, honey, come here. i got to show you what I passed. She came in and she, oh my goodness. She said, did that hurt? I said, well, yeah, <laughs> but it really wasn't that bad. Uh, it wasn't that big. It was bad enough, believe me, but it wasn't that big. She said, well, you still haven't had a baby's head come out of you, so <laughs> she got me on that. But anyway, thank you, church, for your prayers, and it's good to be back. <laughs> yeah. Dean told me that earlier, and honestly, I could not tell anybody that, but you just shared it, and your wife is so red right now, it's amazing. <laughs> yeah. All right, anybody else? All right, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we have gathered together in your name to worship you and to lift you up and declare that you are King of Kings. And we ought to be excited to be able to tell everybody that Jesus Christ is King. And so, Lord, I, uh, I just commit this hour to you. I thank you for the opportunity to be with your people. I also pray, Lord, that you would be in our presence, and that, Lord, you would move and have freedom to reign in the hearts of everyone here. Father, for out of, out of the word comes life. And so, Lord, speak that life to us today, I pray. Thank you for the many blessings that you've given to us. And I pray, Lord, that you would receive the glory. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Won't you stand with us as we sing Stand Up for Jesus? <laughs> Oh, 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 oh,
Let my Jesus change your life. 
Would you stand with us as we sing Shine, Jesus, Shine. Praise team. Thank you, Linda, for the special music. I ask you to turn your scriptures to 2 Timothy chapter 1. We're returning to the series that we didn't quite finish up because of my illness, <coughs> entitled Because You Ask. So we have this week and next week, and a couple that uh, we're going to give you in paper form next week but I like this question I changed the uh, just the pronoun in this here's how it reads on the card how do you let go of the fear and embarrassment that you may feel when the people around you don't believe and act like you're weird or even stupid for being a Christian. It's hard to show my faith without feeling uncomfortable. I like 
that question. This comes from somebody I don't know who, but <clears throat> they may have fear and embarrassment, but they're saying, what can I do about it? Not content to stay in that condition. And I will say, first of all, that to that person, you're not the only one. Will you admit openly this morning that you too have struggled with some kind of fear and embarrassment in your faith? Maybe you're ashamed at some time in your life to speak up to a family member for fear whether or not they would still talk to you. Or to a coworker because you know it would be a little odd going forward. Or maybe a friend because you weren't sure how that friend would continue or not to be the same friend in the same kind of way if you shared your faith. Would you raise your hand? If you faced a time in your life when you didn't speak up or you avoided the conversation or missed an opportunity, let me see your hands. Whoever wrote that, look all around. I think it would include most every one of us. So this morning, I would like to take us to a text of Scripture, 2 Timothy, that talks three times about not being ashamed. And then we're going to hopefully glean four truths for the person who wrote this and everyone else who raised their hand. Sound good? Well, stand with me as we reverence the reading of God's word. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, according to the promise of life that is in Christ Jesus. To Timothy, my dear son, Grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. I thank God, whom I serve, as my forefathers did, with a clear conscience, as night and day I constantly remember you in my prayers. Recalling your tears, I long to see you, so that I may be filled with joy. I have been reminded of your sincere faith which first lived in your grandmother, Lois, and in your mother, Eunice, and I am persuaded, now lives in you also. For this reason, I remind you to fan into the flame the gift of God, which is in you through the laying on of my hands. <clears throat> For God did not give you a spirit of timidity, but a spirit of power, of love and self-discipline. So do not be ashamed to testify about our God, our Lord, or ashamed of me as his prisoner, but join me in suffering for the gospel by the power of God who has saved us and called us to a holy life, not because of anything we have done, but because of his own purpose and grace. This grace was given to us by Christ Jesus before the beginning of time, but has now been revealed through the appearing of our Savior, Christ Jesus, who has destroyed death and has brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. And of this gospel, I was appointed a herald and an apostle and a teacher. That is why I am suffering as I am. Yet I am not ashamed, because I know whom I have believed, and I am convinced that he is able to guard what, he ha what I have entrusted to him for that day. What you have heard from me as a pattern of sound teaching, or keep as a pattern of sound teaching, with faith and love in Christ Jesus. Guard the good deposit that has been entrusted to you. Guard it with the help of the Holy Spirit who lives in us. You may be seated.
this morning as we begin. I would like for us to look at those four ways. Four ways that we can put off fear and embarrassment. How can we live by faith, understanding sometimes we have fear, sometimes we have embarrassment. And the first way that I see from this passage is this. You are a part of an ancestry of aliens. Okay? We're not talking about aliens as in spacecraft aliens. We're talking about aliens here that are on this earth, that this is not our home. It didn't begin here with Paul. It began with Abraham. And Abraham's call by God, Abraham, leave the country where you are at and go to the land that I'm going to show you. And there you will live your entire life as an alien among those people. Abraham never lived a day past God's calling in which he did live as a part of them. He was always an alien, a foreigner in a foreign country. Because the country that he went to, the promised land of God, was never given to him in his lifetime. Can I tell you this? That you, Christian, are also an alien in this world. We're a foreigner. So we ought to feel a little weird. Right? We ought to feel a little stupid. Because we're not a part of what is going on here. We're living in a world that is not our own. In a culture that is not our own. And you and I see how much the culture is changing at this moment. And praise God, we're not a part of it. We live in the world, but we're not of the world. And so here we are in this passage of Scripture. First Peter puts it this way. Listen to First Peter chapter 2, verses 11 and 12. Dear friends, I urge you as foreigners and exiles to abstain from sinful desires which war against your soul. Live, in, live such good lives among the pagans that though they may accuse you of doing wrong, they may see your good deeds and glorify God on the day that he visits. We live among the people that are not our own. I will tell you this. First Peter also tells us that when we were a part of this family, we were made into God's family, called out of the darkness into the light, that he put you into another group of people that shouldn't be people that make you feel embarrassed or fearful. Those are brothers and sisters in Christ. Yesterday, <clears throat> I uh, had a little time to uh, to wait outside for the women to get done with their conference. So I uh, struck up a conversation with some of the parking attendants at the church where I was at. And um, one, of, one of them was named John. And we talked back and forth. We talked tires. He had worked on tires. I guess you know that we did have a blowout on the interstate. That was a God thing. <clears throat> we were doing 70 plus at times. <clears throat> And I felt it started to started to do one of these things, just jump up and down. I thought, okay, I don't know what that is, but that doesn't feel good. So I pulled over, checked all the tires, or at least I thought I did, got back in the bus, and just starting to cruise to speed, within half a mile, maybe a mile, that tire blew out. I am so glad we weren't doing 70 plus. And then where we stopped was a great place. We pulled off on this area. They had those, it was a construction zone. So they had those barriers on both sides. So you can't pull off on the side of the thing all the time. So we, we, we kind of made our way down to the bottom of the hill. And there was a construction site. And so we were able to pull off and then back in behind the barrier that they were using for construction. It was so great. 
They had stuff there. There was nobody there. They had a porta potty that I was praising God for after about an hour. It was <clears throat> it was good. You know, we uh, the women all went. They sent a bus to get all the women because they couldn't tow them, uh, and uh, sent a bus to get them. And then they. Uh, the guy said, hey, let's just change this tire here. I see a spare on the bottom. I said, okay, that sounds like a good idea. He could not get it off. He couldn't get the, he couldn't get the tire off. He took all the lug nuts off, and, and I said, hey, after about 15 minutes, I said, hey, I, I got a silly question. He said, what is it? <clears throat> I said, does that piece need to come off? He said, nope. Okay, all right, keep it going. And uh, he did. He beat on it and tried to get it off. Could not get it off. Um, Jay Tomlin sent some advice last night after like a day and a half or like a day afterwards. <clears throat> he said, I heard you broke down on the side of the road. He said, I've got, I know how to get that, get you back on the road. Put a cream stick in the gas tank. <laughs> Jay, that wasn't helpful. And it didn't work. So, <laughs> so trustees, there's a cream stick. We have to get. But anyway, we got back. We, I mean, it was such a God thing. We got the women to a restaurant. They got, to, they got taken care of really, really well. And we got tires, and we're back on the road. So we got to the conference, and he said, man, you, you made good time for, for breaking down. I said, well, we came in last night. We talked. <clears throat> And I said to John when he left, I'll see you later soon. Why was that? Because I had met him for a, an hour in the parking lot? No, because he was a brother in Christ. And he was a part of God's family, of which I have been called to be a part of God's family. So one day soon, we're going to see, if we never see each other again, we're going to see each other in our home in heaven. So just realize this. You're a part of an ancestry of aliens. Paul says in verse 3, I thank God whom I serve for my, uh, as my forefathers did. This has been going on for a long, long time. And then he says in verse 5, I have been reminded of your sincere faith, which first lived in your grandmother, Lois, and then in your mother, Eunice, and I am persuaded now lives in you. This is going on generation after generation in Timothy's life. A part of an ancestry of aliens, of those who have been called by God, who are just sojourners here in this world. Point number two. You've been called to a new life by grace and suffering. You've been called to a new life by grace and suffering. Verse 8. So don't be ashamed to testify about our Lord or ashamed of me, his prisoner. But join me with, in suffering for the gospel by the power of God. Look at verse 9. Who has saved us and called us to a holy life, not because of anything we've done, but because of his purpose and his grace. This grace was given to us in Christ Jesus before the beginning of time. We have been called by grace, by the God of the universe, and his son has revealed, been revealed to us, and the spirit has opened our eyes, and we have nothing to do but say, thank you, Lord. There is nothing that we have done. It is solely by his grace that we are Christians. Amazing grace, we sang in the bus. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. We have been saved by grace and made into something that we never could have been made into before. 
two verses before in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9 and 10 says, but you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of the darkness and into his wonderful light. Once you were not a people, but now you are the people of God. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. And that is grace. The grace of God that has called you and opened your eyes. Why is it that some people you share the gospel with and they look at you as though they have scales on their eyes? It's because they do. And until the Lord removes the scales from your eyes like he did the blind man when, <clears throat> when he could see, when the scales are removed, your eyes are open, it's like, wow, I see it now. I couldn't see it before. And so when I shared the good news of Jesus Christ with the guy that towed our bus, I would love to be able to tell you we got out of the wrecker and climbed down on the ground and got on our knees and he prayed to receive Christ, but he didn't. But I did what I was called to do and to share the good news. God is the one who's going to take that seed and make it grow. He is the one who is going to bring about fruit from the word that he has left us to share with others. I look forward to writing Jim this week and telling him, hey, just wanted to let you know that the people at the tire store, they had trouble getting the tire off as well. It took them an hour and a half. They told me they'd have it fixed in a half an hour. You'll find great joy in that. <laughs> You'll also get a gospel track that I've had you send out before. If I never meet you again. A great, great track. So, here we have an example. Jesus is the example. He is the one who has saved us by his grace. Look at the second part of uh, verse 9. This grace was given to us in Christ Jesus before the beginning of time, but has now been revealed through the appearing of our Savior, Christ Jesus, who has destroyed death and has brought life and immortality through the gospel. In this gospel, I was appointed a herald and an apostle and a teacher. That is why I am suffering as I am. Paul is saying in a very real way, the reason I am suffering is because first my Lord suffered. He suffered in providing for me a salvation in which he destroyed death and has brought life and immortality to light through his death. He is the example of our suffering. Yes, we are going to suffer in this world. We're going to be misunderstood. That's all right. Some people are going to look at us weird. And sometimes we're going to not connect with them. But still, we have the point of being able to say, hey, if I have to suffer, I will suffer. The question really comes to me as I thought about this is, who do we serve? Every one of us likes to be liked, right? And so if we think, if I share Jesus with somebody, they might not like me anymore. And so we do our best to be able to serve this person and serve this person and to serve this person, hoping that they'll like us. When the question is, should we be serving our Lord instead? And can I tell you this? The news that you have, this good news of Jesus Christ, really is good news. 
It is the best news that they're going to ever hear. They might reject it. They may look at you like you got a horn growing out of your head. They may think you're stupid. But you know what? The news that you have to share with them is not only really good, but it is the greatest news that they will ever receive. And that is this Jesus has also died for your sins. And he arose from the grave for your sins. And today he is opening his arms to receive you as Lord and Savior. If you'll turn from your sins and turn to him. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1 to 3 tells us about this example of Jesus. When it says, therefore, <coughs> since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. And let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him. Consider him, it says, who endured, who endured such opposition from sinners so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. He is our example. He was willing to go through the suffering and the shame of the cross. Why was that? Why was Jesus willing to go through the suffering of being crucified for nothing that he had done wrong? It says many pictures that we have have him covered in the bottom part of his body. But they said in the times of Roman crucifixion, they would strip you naked just to embarrass you. And they would crucify you in front of people so that they would see, don't mess with Rome. Why would Jesus endure that? Why would Jesus take on the scorn and the embarrassment of that moment? Because he wasn't looking at the now. He was looking at the next. He was looking at a throne so that he would look past that, that shame to the joy that was coming when it says <clears throat> he, endure, uh, he, he destroyed death and has brought life and immortality to light through the, uh, through the gospel. I don't have my glasses on. Someplace in there it talks about him being, I guess, he destroyed death and has brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. As he was seated upon the throne of God, he looked past the shame to the glory that was coming to him, to where now he has the name that is above all names. Point number three. You are given a spirit of power, love, and self-discipline. You are given a spirit of power and love and self-discipline. Verse 6, For this reason I remind you to fan into a flame the gift of God which is in you through the laying on of my hands. For God did not give you a spirit of timidity, but a spirit of power and of love and of self-discipline. You see, God didn't give us a spirit to be timid. The word means showing a lack of courage or confidence, easily frightened, weak need, afraid, faint-hearted. He didn't give us that spirit. Nor did he give us a spirit of timidity, which also means lily-livered, pigeon-hearted, spineless, gutless chickens. That is not the spirit of God. That's a spirit, all right, but it's not the spirit of God. God's spirit has given us a spirit of power. So you got to say, where does this fear come from? 
that I have? Where does this ashamedness come from that I'm dealing with when I'm thinking about talking to somebody or even speaking the name of Jesus? I can assure you this, it did not come from our Lord. We wonder, what will she say? What will he think? What is it that keeps us from sharing the good news of Jesus Christ? And if it's timidity, it's not from God. You know, the best way to love someone is to share the truth with them. It says here that he's given us a spirit of power. That means that we are able to be able to do it in his power. We don't have to worry about depending upon our own power, but we share him in love. And the best way to share love is to be able to share the truth with them. Because the scripture is telling us that this gospel is the power of God. This Jesus who died upon the cross, he looked weak. But the good news of the gospel is that the cross of God shows us his power. At the cross, Jesus powerfully defeats sin, Satan, and death. And the message and the word of Jesus is how God shows his power in this world. You have a powerful message within you. And that message is able to change lives. So don't be fearful. Don't be afraid. That's the final point. Therefore, do not be ashamed. Do not be ashamed. He says that in verse 8 and 12 and 16. That means that you and I need to develop a heart that is not ashamed of the gospel. It's easy to understand sometimes how we're embarrassed or even ashamed to follow Jesus. Jesus said himself that we would be hated on his account. What will help us to not be ashamed of Jesus? Here's the secret to victory. Love God more. Love him more. Here is the one, the scripture says, who is able to keep us. Verse 13. What you heard from me, keep as a pattern of sound teaching. With faith and love in Christ Jesus. Guard the good deposit that has been entrusted to you. Guard it with the help of the Holy Spirit who lives in you. That's our part. Look at his part in verse 12. That is why I'm suffering as I am, yet I am not ashamed because I know that I, uh, I, because I know whom I have believed and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed until that day. The Lord says, I am able to keep you. I am able to hold on to you and to bring life into you. Allow me to hold on to you, but you hold on as well. Allow yourself to be convinced of God's word. For when we are convinced of God's word, we're less convinced of the world around us. It's no longer can we live in the world and live in the things of God. We're going to have to choose. Are we going to trust what God says or are we going to trust what the world says? Sometimes it's understandable to be embarrassed. I mean, we're not perfect. 
we still struggle with sin. We've been redeemed, but yet we're sometimes struggling to live as though we're redeemed. We live in a culture that doesn't fit our world view any longer. And so we're foreigners and we're exiles. I think we know a little bit about exiles, don't we? Whether that's from the southern border or whether that's from Afghanistan, exiles are coming into our country. And when you look at someone who is coming in from from Afghanistan or something, you can tell by looking that their lives are different than ours. Their belief system is different than ours. In many cases, their God is different than ours. But you know what? So is ours. Our life is different than theirs. Our actions should be different than theirs. And we're not talking about, hey, reaching out and and speaking Christ to everybody you see today. No, he has put you in your life and on your walk to be able to meet the people that he wants you to share with. And that's not every stranger that walks down down the sidewalk or every person that comes into the gas station. That is, he has put certain people in your life and you will know at that moment, this is what God wants me to do. And if that's what he wants you to do, don't fear, don't be embarrassed, just share the truth. That is who you are. No need to be fearful. No need to be embarrassed. God has given you everything you need. He is guarding you and he is saying, hold on. I am preparing you for this new life. That is to come. But until then, be my servant. Let's pray. Almighty God, we sometimes struggle in fear and embarrassment. But Lord, allow us to see Jesus' example who scorned the shame, who scorned the embarrassment, to look forward to the joy that would come to him when he was back at home with you. And may we do the same. May we scorn the fear and the embarrassment as we look ahead We look to the time when we will be with you and we would love others enough to be able to tell them the truth. Father, I thank you for this person who wrote this. I pray, Lord, that their words have received an adequate response from your word. During this time of invitation, Lord, if there are some who need to make a decision for you, I ask that they would come and Join me here at the front and allow that decision to be made openly and for your glory and your glory alone. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Will you stand as the music is played?